what a lot of inspiring stories we've had of museums and businesses. Um, my first museum job was at Old Fort Henry, so that's particularly close to my heart. In fact, Darren tells such good stories that I asked him if he wouldn't present about the boat museum. Um, clearly, he was afraid he was going to steal my thunder and be outdone by the little boat museum down the road. So the Thousand Islands Boat Museum, uh, I still get the impression many people don't know who we are or what we're about, so I'm going to do a, a quick overview. Show of hands, who knows that we exist? That's pretty good. Well, you do now, because i that's excellent. Um, located on the Gananoque waterfront, the Boat Museum clearly works to preserve heritage. It serves as a community center. It acts as an educational institution, and it generates tourism. We were officially incorporated in November 2014, and I realized this morning that would put us into the year of the terrible twos, which would go to the uh, torturous threes and that F word with the fours. But we are going into our second year. Please come see us. Um, the museum works with five priorities. Everything we do is wrapped around five priorities. The first one is to ensure a strong financial foundation, also to reflect life on the river, to engage the next generation, to create interactive displays and exhibits that keep people coming back, and perhaps most importantly, to focus on quality, not quantity, to do what we can do. We have a five-year, sorry, a 49-year lease with the town of Gananoque. Uh, it's a campus-style uh, museum, so we've got a boat workshop, the children's center, office buildings, boathouse exhibit, and of course we have docks on the waterfront. These new docks were built in 2015-16, so they were finished in spring, and they were finished in August with a wave attenuation system which now goes around them. Uh, the project will be finished with a boathouse roof, which will enable us to increase our product offering and expand the programming that we have now. But as with all museums, we of course struggle for uh, operational and capital uh, funding, and with new museums that's even more of a challenge. We have had significant operational and capital support from our board of directors. So it's important to note that this is a museum run by 14 board of directors who give tirelessly of their time uh, to help guide the museum. So they give their time, uh, financial support, and in addition to a very favorable lease from the town of Gananoque, we've had a strong supporter in the Thousand Islands Community Development Corporation. In fact, they have been with us from day one. We had uh, internships that helped us start, and our museum manager, one of the uh, two people who run the museum, is with us today, Rebecca Keyes. She started with us on an internship from the TICDC. They went on to help us with capital of, uh, support to build our buildings or to, to turn our buildings into a museum, helped us build our docks, and have committed money as well towards our um, roof. We've also had corporate support. The Gananoque boat line is our neighbor. We're very fortunate to have them. And from day one, they've been there supporting us. Our first initiative was an outreach program in the high school. And the Gananoque boat line, for many years, took all of the high school kids free of charge, fed them, got them on the river, and took them to the Antique Boat Museum in Clayton, which was no small feat, knowing the paperwork needed with these kids, so that they could see a museum in action and get out on the river. And we really thought that this was always about the kids the kids who don't have access to the river. And after the first one of these trips, we got a note from one of the teachers, and I, I'd like to share this, it's one of my favorite ones. So this is a teacher, somebody who grew up in Gananoque, and he writes, growing up on Birch and Elm Streets, my only experience with the St. Lawrence River was at Rotary Beach. I've never ever been to Clayton, let alone appreciate a history lesson involving the St. Lawrence skiff. I had always heard about these fabled boats, but never fathomed what they looked like. How impressed the kids were to see their history before, or their past before their eyes. So that's from an adult, somebody who grew up in Gananoque, so we knew we were on the right track. But what makes us different? The museum is really about telling stories of the river through the lens of a boat. But not an old boat, not a new boat, all boats. Big boats, little boats, small boats, homemade boats, pontoon boats. And if we can get the visitor into a boat 
with hands in the river, smelling freshly sanded wood in our boat shop, hearing the river sounds, and seeing the ever-constant, ever-changing riverscape in front of us, then we figure we're achieving our goals. And really, it's been what's going on on the Gananoque waterfront for hundreds of years and generations. Whether it's an afternoon taking the girls out to impress them in the boat, to steam launch tours along the Gananoque waterfront, Royal visits. This was the royal visit in 1901 of the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall, later King George V and Queen Mary. You'll see the Gananoque swing, swing bridge in the back there. To the Nickel Cup. The Nickel Cup ran in 1948 in Gananoque through until 1952. It's been resurrected through the um, tireless efforts of Chris McCarney and his fantastic team of volunteers. It was hosted on the museum docks this summer and is set to kick off the 2017 summer on June 3rd and 4th, so mark your uh, calendars for that. But of course, it's the river stories, it's the stories of these adventures that really fascinate and that the museum is trying to tell. And we're trying to actively narrate those stories through things like getting kids to recognize and restore locally built boats teaching them river knowledge so that they have a sense of confidence and will get into the boats and out onto the river. Providing an educational place for them to come and do things like take their boater safety exam. And of course, getting them into the boats they've restored. And I think this is one of my very favorite pictures. So this girl is in the boat Raboki, which was uh, launched and named River Boat Kids for the high school class that restored them. So she through high school, or through her, she was in grade seven actually, restored the boat, wrote her boater safety exam with us, and now has access to the river. And our final chapter, of course, is getting the kids out onto the islands, where a lot of these histories were, the stories were told, but the history continues to unfold. And the significance of these stories is really important. If we can etch the significance of these stories into the imaginations of visitors and people from the community, it's really historic preservation at its very best. Leak Island, Thwartway. Who's been on Leak Island? Show of hands. Of course, for us, we know that that's our, our, um, our hideaway, our Sandy Beach hideaway in the afternoons in the summer. But in the Second World War, Leak Island was owned by an American family named the Kipps. And they donated the use of the island to our Canadian government to help our Canadian war vets convalesce from the mustard gas poisoning and the horrors of being in war. Catherine Kipp paid for the nurses, the doctors. She grew all the vegetables on the island herself. Over 240 soldiers were looked after during the summers of 1918 and 19. It's one of the thousands of stories that's just waiting to be told. They had the first electrical um, um, system put on the island to look after these war vets. And then people from the, uh, from the region, from Gananoque, helped ferry them back and forth. So it's a fascinating story. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to stay financially or get to be financially sustainable? Well, the first thing, I think I see a problem in our slide, but we don't have numbers on our slide. So I'll just give you the numbers since I know them by heart. The museum is hoping to uh, generate 51% of what it needs in operations, or what it needs from revenue from our operational initiatives. About 24% is going to come from private, and government sources will be closer to 35. You'll see from this, we did it, we analyzed uh, museum averages, and we're higher in the operational end than most museums of our budget size. And where are we going to get this from? Well, it's not from the little girl in the boat. We want to make sure she can keep doing that and not charge her for that. We want to keep that accessible to all children and to our community. But we have a group of summer visitors who come to the museum and do, or who come to our region. But right beside us, we have 100 to 250,000 people who come to get onto the Gananoque boat lines. We have a cottage crowd. We have boaters needing dockage, especially during the last two weeks of July. And we have general regional visitors. In fact, 
There are more than five million people within a couple of hours' drive from where we are. So if we can generate the revenue from them to subsidize what we want to continue doing on a cultural side with river experiences for the community, we've met our goal. And the way we want to engage this group of summer visitors is to give them interactive exhibits, exhibits that let them come off the Gananoque boat lines and do things with us, whether the, whether the buildings are open, closed, come back the next day. Exhibits that encourage participation. In-water exhibits to get people onto boats. Pop-up exhibits, so exhibits that change from day to day and from week to week to keep people coming back. If we can create, if we can get that group of summer visitors to the museum, then we can continue doing things like creating a sense of place for our, our residents. This is their waterfront, their cottage. Our school outreach programs, where the first boat we built was the St. Lawrence Skiff. It's at the museum now, and our high school kids are welcome and come use it. We built Optimist sailing dinghies for our sailing school. The first uh, sailing lesson was given in this boat, actually one of these boats, this summer. Reboki, again, the boat that you saw that was restored last summer and launched in spring. We launched a sailing program this year. The first one went for two weeks this summer. We'll be running it for three weeks next summer. We have a children's activity center. We have a boat builders exhibit so that our residents in the community have a clear understanding of the important boat building that took place on the waterfront. We have a cottage exhibit put together with uh, furniture from an actual cottage that was being demolished. And we have events, events like our annual boat show on the new docks, the launch of the boats that are restored and built at the museum, launch of things like Raboki, again, that was restored by the high school kids last, summer, uh, last winter on site. So it brings us again to our group of summer visitors who, oop, there we go, who will allow us, by, by, by engaging them and piquing their interest, we'll be able to continue doing these sorts of activities that I've just shown you, the boat builders exhibit, the cottage exhibit, uh, events, and sailing school will be able to continue doing that for our community, eventually getting into adult workshops, boater safety programs for the general public, Sunday free sales, adult sailing school, we've had a lot of requests for that, boat rental, and more events. Which brings me to lighting up the village. <clears throat> Not quite lights light, but it's our little lighting up of the village. So together with uh, Home Hardware, we have strung over 1,700 feet of light on the five buildings on the waterfront. And you're all invited. Tomorrow from 5 to 7, we're going to flip the switch. We also have a 25-foot tree that will be lit up on our docks. So please come. It's free, and we'd love to see you. Really, the kids or the next generation that we've engaged so far tell the story best. So I'm going to leave it to them to tell you what we're all about. When Canada was born, Gananoque was already 78. Gan means doorway or entrance, and Gan was opening doors with boats. Rivers were the highways and boats were everywhere. Boats for transport, for fishing, or just having fun. Gan has over 230 years of river stories. We need a place where we'll connect, interact, share those stories and learn. It may be called a museum, but it's actually a new doorway. It's not really a museum, you know. It's a lot more than a museum. I think it surprised us how cool it is. It means a lot of things. Things I never would have thought of. It's about the history. It's about the town and the river. And boats and people. It's about you and me. It's about our grandparents, our friends, our community. It's about all the people who are here before us. The boat builders. All of them, each and every one of them. We're learning about people who built boats for years and years and what makes them special. We're working on one of their boats now. Learning new skills. We'll get to discover the river and the island. Places you can't see from shore. Our museum is a community. It's where things happen. A dream is being realized. We have a beautiful home in a world famous place. Our children are learning new things and they're hands on involved. They've already recreated river history and reconnected with their river community. They're inventing their future 
by understanding their past. Our museum is where things are happening, where ideas are growing and old skills shared. Our museum belongs to the community and embraces everyone. Soon, our docks will connect us to the river and the islands. And the next phase is already imagined. We'll connect better as a community and celebrate our past and future as one. This is an amazing place. We're learning about boats, fixing boats, learning to be safe in boats. We want you guys to get involved. Come along and help us. Come on, get involved. It's not what you were expecting, is it?